focus on headline. All right, let's take a look at what major issues are making the headlines today on Focus on Headline. For this, joining us in the studio, we have our reporters in Che Jae-hee and Chung Ye-ing. Guys, welcome back. Good evening. Good evening <laughs> to you guys. We've got another pair of twins uh, this time around. Uh, let's start things off uh, with some domestic politics news. A second round of a warrant investigation on a former special counsel, Park young soo This was uh, held earlier today. Now, Park is suspected uh, receiving 5 billion Korean won during the development of the Taejang-dong Area Chi, you're going to start us off. Uh, give us the latest on this. Sure. So the decision to detain former special counsel Park Young soo who's suspected of the so-called five billion club for accepting money in exchange for helping private developers in Taejang-dong will be finalized as early as today. And earlier this morning, the Seoul Central District Court held a second court hearing for Park, who's specifically charged with violating the Anti-Graft Act and receiving money under the Specific Economic Crimes Act. Uh, on the 30th of June, the court rejected the prosecution's first request for an arrest warrant, stating that there were disputed issues regarding Park's eligibility, whether he actually received the bribes, and whether a promise to pro- provide uh, the bribes was made. And the prosecution then refiled the warrant on the 31st of last month, bolstering evidence for all of Park's charges and adding an additional allegation for violating the Anti-Graft Act. Uh, For listeners who haven't been following up with this particular news, Park is accused of accepting 800 million won, which is about 780,000 U.S. dollars, in exchange for fulfilling the requests of private contractors in Taejang-dong, that's between 2014 and 2015, while serving as an outside director, board chairman, and audit committee member of Udibank. Uh, Prosecutors believe Park received 300 million won, which is about 290,000 U.S. dollars in cash to fund his election as president of the Korean Bar Association in 2015, that is, and 500 million won for a request to issue a letter of intent in March uh, to April 2015 when Udi Bank's role was reduced. He's also accused of receiving 1.1 billion won in short-term loans from Hwacheon Daeyu through his daughter between 2019 and 2021 when he was spe- when he was a special counsel. Again, uh, this is a uh, huge uh, allegations and a huge case going on right now and uh, of course uh, although it's not gonna it's gonna probably take uh, months and months time and I think uh, uh, a lot of people have been uh, very shocked initially when they found out about Park young soo considering uh, who he was prior uh, to these allegations that have come out uh, speaking of development let's talk about another uh, big issue here real estate development and construction sector really under a close scrutiny uh, for a number of issues here they're calling these the so called boneless apartment scandal uh, because they found out that a lot of these uh, steel bars are supposed to be used uh, in the constructions for cement uh, walls have not been used. They're saying they're leaving out these steel bars. Uh, President Yoon said that the construction cartel is behind the poor construction cases uh, revealed in the past months. Uh, we had the LH, uh, one of the, uh, the the apartment complexes in LH, I believe over in Incheon, where the parking lot collapsed because of these quote-unquote, the boneless, uh, I guess, construction. Uh, And they're going to be establishing what's called the Anti-Cartel Fair Construction Promotion Office. Uh, Yane, you have more on this. Sure. So um, on Wednesday, Yi Han-jun, president of Korea Land and Housing Corp. or LH, uh, made this announcement of establishing the office at an emergency meeting of LH's responsible stakeholders, where they discussed measures to eradicate the construction cartel and poor construction practices. Now, Lee said they sincerely apologize for the unfortunate incidents that occurred at LH apartments, affirming their commitment to ensure construction safety and address suspicious surrounding preferential treatment in the entire process of LH's uh, construction work. Now, LH will establish the, um, what is mentioned, the Anti-Cartel Fair Construction Promotion Office, which will be led by its head of the Construction Safety and Technology Division, with a number of external experts participating in its efforts for diverse fields. So the office started its operation right away on the same day of the announcement and will last until the 
cartel is eliminated. It will play a role in eradicating potential preferential treatment, collusion, fraud, and corruption uh, that may occur in the entire construction process, including design, examination, contract, construction, materials selection, and supervision. LH will also strengthen its role as an ordering organization and in uh, and overhaul how it manages its construction sites. Now, in particular, it will consider introducing a one-strike-out system for companies that are found to be conducting poor construction practices. So companies that cause major-level disasters and uh, construction accidents will be subject to direct penalties of expulsion, such as restricting their participation in bidding going forward. Uh, so when it comes to the 15 apartment complexes, it has already announced on the 31st to have such substandard construction quality. LH has decided to request the National Police Agency to run an investigation on the companies involved in the design, construction, and supervision process uh, for the design error in the flat slab structure and missing out the necessary rebars. So the r- the real unfortunate thing out of all of this for our listeners out there, the uh, the LH apartments are sort of uh, government subsidized homes uh, mm-hmm. for lower income families. Uh, it is the more affordable uh, homes out there, and so it's been long known that the construction for these LH apartments are not up to par as compared to, for example, like the, the Zais and the, the Ramians and the, the, the Lotte Castles, you know, the, the big... Private. The, yeah, the Company. private companies, mm. right? I mean, that everyone talks about. It's far, far, uh, I guess, uh, less like, well-built than some of these uh, privately uh, built apartments. But still, though, uh, when you're talking about the safety of those that are living in these apartments, you still can't skim out on, I guess, some of the most uh, you know crucial things, like for example, having these bars uh, when you're uh, creating the, the the walls, for instance, and you know leading to a collapse in the parking lot, uh, which is a major major uh, uh, fault of the the construction company. And so the consensus is that because these construction companies are not technically making as much money or profit off of constructing these doesn't necessarily mean that they have to skim off of these uh, construction materials. And it is just terrible. And it's uh, it's good that they're cracking down on this now uh, before, again, it could have been a fatal, fatal accident that could have happened. But the government has decided, though, to compensate for the faulty apartments developed by the state-run Korea Land and Housing Corporation, LH. Uh, Ji, you have more on this. Right. So the ruling People Power Party and the government decided to compensate prospective tenants of poorly constructed apartments commissioned by the Korea Land and Housing Corporation, LH, for damages and grant them the right to terminate their contracts. Now, the government will also conduct a full inspection of private apartments and those ordered by LH to check for defective construction by the end of September. Uh, The ruling party said in a briefing that it will thoroughly investigate the wrongful practices and illegal acts that occurred under the previous government and come up with fundamental measures, along with a full inspection of related apartment complexes uh, to resolve public unrest caused by the recent defective construction. Based on the inspection results, the government will proceed with reinforcement work and penalization of those responsible as well. And the reinforcement work will be completed swiftly for the 15 complexes where defects were identified. Uh, And residents of poorly constructed apartments will be compensated for damages to their satisfaction. And for prospective tenants, the government will grant the right to terminate the contract uh, contract without restrictions on redrawing. And the government will also conduct a full survey of apartments completed and under construction by the private sector as well. Uh, That's uh, private companies. And the government will announce the inspection plan for all privately developed apartments this week and complete the inspection by the end of September. Yeah, and, and I think there needs to be a thorough inspection of even the, the private uh, construction mm. uh, apartments because, again, I, I mentioned this briefly in our previous show, but uh, we had uh, a couple of weeks ago just torrential downpours in parts of the country, and uh, they were saying that a number of uh, construction sites were still doing construction on these uh, newly built uh, apartment complexes, and it's dangerous, especially when you're mixing cement and things like that, and uh, things are not dry yet, and it's getting wet, and 
and they're still building. Uh, they're doing constructions on these buildings. And so a thorough inspection is required because I believe, was it last year or the year before that, uh, somewhere in Gwangju, uh, where uh, the I Park building, and that's, again, that's a, another major apartment complex by, I believe, uh, Hyundai, I believe, is responsible for that. Uh, there was a collapse while there was construction going on. And so uh, inspections during, obviously, the construction is all the more important mm -hmm. as well. But at the center of all of this is this missing rebar in the apartment building and what's called the, the flat slab uh, structure. Now, it hasn't been used a lot for residential buildings like apartments, but uh, due to some of the benefits it can bring, some apartments did start to adopt the system, mainly for the parking lots, which unfortunately led to a series of poor construction cases. But uh, Yen, you're going to tell us why all of this is uh, something to no uh, take note of. Right. So uh, I think it will uh, pretty, you know, help us a lot uh, to understand the situation better if we have an idea of what this flat slab structure is all about. Sure. Mm -hmm. So simply put, uh, this is a structure where columns of a building directly support concrete ceiling or what we call slab without any horizontal beams installed. So here, since the low Load is concentrated where the columns and the slab meet. Uh, several layers of rebar must be wrapped around the columns to prevent the slab from cracking. And in this recent scandal, these rebars were uh, what was found uh, to be missing. So the flat slab structure was, um, you know, it is widely being used around the world. Uh, but in Korea, it wasn't really popular, especially for residential buildings, uh, due to the social stigma it had after the collapse of Sampung department store in 19. Uh, in the mid-2010s, however, uh, because of their advantages, uh, they began to be applied to apartments again, mostly for the underground parking lots. Now, the key benefits the structure can offer is that it is actually cheap to build with less construction workers needed, and it allows changing the internal structure more easily. So with wider parking lot, the residents can park more cars, and obviously this is why many residential buildings are adopting this method to make their building more appealing. Healing. While this structure is naturally more vulnerable to collapse than other residential construction structures, uh you know, the problem is here uh, that the flat uh, flat slab structure is not something the apartment construction companies are used to. So an industry insider explained that other types of buildings like shopping centers, they have enough budget to kind of thoroughly carry out each stage of construction. Uh, but for apartments where keeping the costs low uh, is the highest priority, designers and supervisors with relatively lower level of expertise are often hired uh, to oversee the, this complicated structure. Also, a lot of times, retirees from LH or major construction companies often serve as the super supervisors of these constructions. Uh, however, being used to working with other more traditional type of methods, uh, they are sometimes unable to clearly understand and handle the new structure. So this is a big concern for me. Keeping the cost low is the highest priority. The highest priority should be, <laughs> I just bought a house for mm -hmm. hundreds of thousands of dollars, uh, taking out massive loans. I, I, I want to be able to survive and be safe in this new apartment uh, that I'm living in. The whole thing, and it's interesting you mentioned the whole Sampung uh, department uh, store tragedy, right? Mm -hmm. uh, the, the, the big thing was they were, they were saying that uh, inspectors found out that there was some faults, uh, faulty parts, and they needed to do some renovations, but renovations to the area was going to cost a whole lot. Mm -hmm. And so uh, the person in charge of the Sampung department store apparently paid off the inspectors and basically said, listen, just uh, you know, l let it go by. And that, of course, led to the tragedy. And so, mm -hmm. again, it's the most important thing is not to uh, keep the cost low. The most important thing is safety first is what we're doing. And again, all of this might be a little bit complicated. There's a lot more than just putting cement blocks and steel bars and putting everything together. I remember in high school, I, I, uh, I majored in architecture, a terrible idea. Uh, and one of the classes I had to take was called strength and materials. And basically what you're doing is you're doing a whole lot of math uh, mm -hmm. to see whether or not the bars are able to keep up with uh, the pressure and the mm -hmm. weight of whatever and all that stuff. And there's 
a lot of science and math going on, which is weird stuff. But uh, anyways, it's very complicated, uh, and uh, we're hoping that we start making the changes now, and that there there is no tragedy when it comes to uh, the the construction sites there. Uh, let's move on here. The financial supervisory service launching an on-site inspection after BNK Gyeongnam Bank uh, re- reportedly suspected embezzlement worth 7.8 billion Korean won uh, by an employee who worked in the investment banking department. Uh, Jay, tell us more about this. Sure. So the financial supervisory service on Wednesday confirmed the embezzlement of 56.2 billion won. Uh, that's about 43.4 million U.S. dollars at BNK Gyeongnam Bank after conducting an on-site inspection upon receiving a report of this embezzlement case of project financing loans on the 21st of last month. South Korea's financial authority has uh, launched a an investigation into the embezzlement at this bank, marking the second largest amount after a 69.7 billion won incident at Udi Bank last year that involved uh, that's that's in Korean won. And the amount initially reported at this uh, BNK Gyeongnam Bank was 7.79 billion won, as you said earlier. But the on-site examination identified an additional 48.4 billion won. Now, the bank has filed a criminal accusation against the employee suspected of being involved in the embezzlement. And the employee's whereabouts are unknown at this point, according to the bank. Uh, Now, the FSS examination revealed that the suspected employee had embezzled bank funds over six years by stealing parts of the repayment principle of non-performing PF loans or obtaining loans through falsified documents. And the bank had not known this for the past uh, several years. And the employee has also allegedly misappropriated PF loan repayments to settle another PF loan he was responsible for. And the financial authority is is currently conducting further investigations into the alleged uh, embezzlement at other PF businesses managed by the same employee. And following the recent announcement, law enforcement conducted raids on the same day at around uh, 10 irrelevant premises, including the employee's residence, office, and the real estate investment department at BNK Gyeongnam Bank. And the financial authority cited likely failures in the bank's internal controls and has been monitoring PF loans at the relevant branch as well as the bank's headquarters while calling for monitoring of PF loans at other banks. I I mean, again, I I don't know who the this employee is, uh, but employee is, uh, but uh, you know, there is a very good chance that he or she is uh, has kind of up there in the rankings uh, because a lot not everyone has access to being able to approve all the loans and things like that but uh, boy uh, when you're saying they're not they're still trying to find out the whereabouts of this person uh, you could probably tell that uh, he or she is out of the country already and uh, hopefully they'll be able to catch uh, this particular person but uh, as embezzlement cases by employees of financial companies continue the amount of embezzlement this year uh, was the second largest in history now the financial authorities have been supervising strong internal controls at the financial companies but it's been pointing pointed out that the supervision and implementations are only done superficially as it is not well observed on the front line Yane, tell us more about these problems of course so according to data submitted by the fss on wednesday to the office of congressman yang jong suk uh, the embezzlement cases involving employees of financial companies through july this year totaled 59.2 billion won or 45.5 million dollars in 33 cases at 11 companies including the bnk gyeongnam bank incident that we just covered so the amount of embezzlement this year was overwhelmingly highest uh, at gyeongnam bank uh, which was then followed by Xinan Bank uh, in the second place. Now, looking back, the amount of embezzlement by financial sector employees had remained high at above 11 billion one level, or that's uh, $8.4 million until 2020, but it sharply fell down to $3.4 billion won, or $2.6 million in 2021. However, after rising to a historic level of $101 billion won, or seven, $77 million last year, It has hit the second highest level in history this year again. Now, in November last year, following the embezzlement of the Uri Bank uh, employee, the FSS strengthened its human resource management standards, uh, mainly applied to employees who have worked for a long time at a a 
uh, at the same company or the same department. There you go. Uh, however, mm-hmm. yes, uh, it was revealed that its guidelines were not working properly as the employee of Gyeongnam Bank turned out to have embezzled a large sum while working in a similar department for a long period. Now, as a result, the... Um, DFS says it's planning to investigate whether financial companies are properly operating internal control measures, such as regularly rotating workforce between departments and applying force leave system. Now, the uh, authority will also closely examine again whether banks are implementing the internal control measures while fully staying alerted. So here's the thing. I mean, like, I guess naturally, if you've been in the company for a really, really long time, naturally, there's just more trust, right? But again, it's more likely that person who has been in the company for a really long time is more likely to embezzle money than someone, let's say, who's only worked in the company for a year or two. They just don't have the kind of access. They don't have the same. They don't give them the kind of trust with large sums of money and things like that. And so. Again, how they were going under the radar, it's just baffles. It's baffling. Uh, and uh, again, to, to, to these figures here, again, I guess in terms of dollars, if you compare it to maybe like in the United States, might be not on par, but this is a lot of money uh, we're talking about. But also you have to take into consideration all these money are, of course, from the money that uh, people have put into as well. Uh, let's move on here. This is something... Uh, that was very, very concerning when it came in earlier this week. Uh, you had one of the world's three major credit ratings agencies, Fitch, downgrading the U.S.'s credit rating from AAA. Now, this is the highest, uh, highest, uh, basically saying there is absolutely no way that the country can default to Double A plus, uh, it's a notch down, and it is the first time of a such downgrade almost three decades. And uh, such a decision has hugely impacted the global stock market, uh, leading to a steep fall in stock values within a week. This, of course, including here in South Korea. Chi, let's get the details of that. Sure. So Fitch ratings downgraded the United States credit rating on the basis that the country's debt ceiling increase would result in wider deficits. Now, the U.S. Treasury Department immediately fired back following this decision. And like you said, the ratings have now been lowered to AA plus from uh, AAA. And this is the first time the U.S. has been downgraded to this level since 1994. And with the downgrade, the United States is out of Fitch's top AAA group, which includes the Netherlands, Denmark and Australia. It now joins the likes of Canada, Austria, Finland, and New Zealand as double A+. Now, the agency explained that it lowered the U.S. rating due to concerns over deteriorating fiscal health in the country. And it also said in a press release that the U.S. fiscal position is likely to deteriorate over the next three years. And the burden of national debt is growing as well. And it also noted that governance in the U.S. has also deteriorated compared to other AAA rated countries. And politicians have repeatedly bickered over raising the debt limit only to resolve the issue when a default. Uh, was imminent. And following the decision, sentiment towards safe haven assets intensified and uh, European and U.S. stocks fell across the board, starting in Asia on the second local time. And amid the risk uh, aversion, the tech-heavy Nasdaq composite closed 2.17% lower, while the Standard & Poor's 500 index closed 1.38% lower. Uh, And the U.S. Treasury market was relatively stable, but the 10-year Treasury yield hit its highest level of the year, rising to 4.2 percent, which is the highest in about nine months. And also in Asia, the recently bullish Nikkei uh, 225 stock average closed 2.30 percent lower, falling below the 33,000 mark. And the Korea's benchmark Kospi and Kostak fell 1.9 percent and 3.18 percent respectively and taiwan's benchmark and australia's uh benchmark were also lower by over one percent i just never really understood uh fitch fitch ratings again uh it's triple a is the highest and i believe uh aaa means that uh, it, it has like zero uh chance of defaulting right and so 
you look at it's true uh, the u.s has never defaulted all right and it is true that they've never defaulted but you have to understand also how many times the u.s has raised this debt ceiling which is basically trying to uh, stop themselves from defaulting technically they don't have the money they're just continuously getting all right let's just borrow more money but to not default it, 78 times uh, since 1960 that they've raised the debt ceiling uh i mean you could take into consideration inflation and things like that and surely they have to raise it time and time out but even the most recent one earlier this year i mean they they really almost defaulted which is why I, th I think that's the closest the U.S. has ever gotten from defaulting, uh, which is why it's not surprising that Fitch had uh, downgraded uh, to double A plus. But even in the first place, the U.S. has so much debt. I don't understand why they have such good credit. I guess, no, actually, even if you have a lot of debt, as long as you continue to pay it off, you get good credit. It's, that's how it <laughs> works, right? All right. I do understand. But again, it has impacted the global stock markets uh, quite a bit. L let's talk about a fascinating story that we talked about uh, on Tuesday with Walter. And uh, when Walter was talking about it, we were saying that it has not yet been confirmed by the international scientific uh, community. Uh, the superconductor um, it, it's been quite a, a huge topic right now amongst the scientists right now. Uh, besides in the search research itself, interest in superconducted theme stocks have grown dramatically because of what we talked about, a incredible development amongst these uh, South Korean scientists. Uh, and But there are concerns about overheating with some stocks being flagged as investment warning stocks. Uh, Yang, uh, tell us what this is all about. Sure. So uh, according to the Korea Exchange, uh, those categorized as superconductor-related stocks or themed stocks have been rising sharply every day, now leading to a buy spree. So against this backdrop, the exchange has decided to flag Seonam as an investment warning item. Uh, this is a company that is said to be a superconductor, nano, and advanced materials business operator. And the exchange explained uh, that investors will have to be cautious when making their investment decisions uh, as trading may be suspended if the price continues to rise further. Now, Seonam's stock price was on an upward trend, hitting the price ceiling for three consecutive days until today, uh, since the 27th of last month. And Sonam is not the only stock that's experiencing this. Now, other stocks such as uh, Shinsung Delta Tech and Tokseung also rose to the price cap level. And there are assumptions that the recent secondary battery frenzy is now being followed uh, by a superconductor frenzy in the uh, within the stock market. Now, superconductors are materials that conduct electricity very well uh, with near zero electrical resistance and uh, recent uh, Korean research um as SJ has just mentioned, claimed it has made the world's first uh, room temperature superconductors, uh, which raised expectations that the way to commercialize this technology has finally opened up. Now, however, the research still requires a peer review to fully validate its findings, and the Korean Society of Superconductivity and Cryogenics has also launched a validation committee composed of experts on the second to respond to the recent controversy over room temperature superconductors. Now, even if the researchers' claims turned out to be valid and true, it will take a long time before the technology can be actually used for real-life applications. This is why experts are still wary of excessive hype over superconductors and are urging caution when making investment decisions. Yeah, because uh, the, the, is it the research on this uh, has not yet been confirmed mm -hmm. right now. Uh, the South Korean researchers are saying that, okay, I mean, it's proven that they're able to uh, create this uh, super con this new form of a uh, superconductor, but it has not been fully uh, reviewed, peer reviewed. It has not been supported by the international community so far. But the way that stocks usually go, it's it's based on uh, you know what they believe is going to happen moving forward. Like you, you, we we say, you never buy stocks on the news, right? And people sell on the news is what it is. But the price of Sanam is ridiculous because a week ago it was something like three thousand one or something like that, a little over three thousand one, and now it's at eleven thousand. Uh, it, it tripled in value in just a week, and a lot of investors are putting into this. But if there's news, uh, if news comes out that it's it's not been proved, uh, it's going to start tanking, and of course, massive money going on uh, going out here uh, but this is a very interesting topic with this superconductor and I'm sure we're going to get an expert's take on this very issue uh, in our future program uh, let's move on here uh, we have been experiencing this intense 
uh, heat wave. I, I have to say today is probably the hottest I've ever felt. Mm. Uh, in, and it's not even humid. There's like no humidity. It's just dry hot. Mm -hmm. It's ridiculous. And it seems like the heat wave is here to stay longer. Uh, let's hear more on this, Jihee. Right. So with the hot and humid North Pacific high pressure system completely covering the country, it's expected to be very hot for most of the next three days, with temperatures reaching around 35 degrees Celsius. And cities nationwide and coastal areas experience intermittent uh, tropical nights as well. Now, in particular, Gangneung City of Gangwon Province experienced a super tropical Jeez. night uh, with a nighttime low of 30.5 degrees Celsius. Celsius. Nighttime low? Yes. Of the wow. <laughs> Oh my gosh. And Gangneung experienced the country's first super tropical night with a nighttime low of 30 degrees or more uh, back in 2013, August that was, and last year's first ever June super tropical night. Now, the Korea Meteorological Administration expects the heat wave to continue in the short term and medium term forecasts through the 13th. And on the 4th and 5th, morning lows are expected to be 23 to 28 and 24 to 28 degrees Celsius, respectively. And daytime highs are expected to be 31 to 36 and 30 to 36 degrees, respectively. Uh, meanwhile, Typhoon Kanun, which was upgraded to very strong, is currently moving northwest at 17 kilometers per hour and will soon slow and stall. Uh, and the typhoon will inject hot and humid air into the country and is expected to increase this heat wave. And for the time being, this typhoon will bring high waves to Jeju Island and the western coast of Je South Cholla province with waves high enough to break over rocks and break waters, uh, breakwaters. And very high waves are expected off the coast of Jeju Island on the 5th in particular. And high waves are also expected off the coast of Southwest and uh, the Namhe area. So it's best to avoid going to the coast areas within this region to avoid accidents. And also a storm surge watch could be issued for the west coast at dawn on the 4th and uh, the dawn of the 5th and for the east coast in the afternoon of the 4th. One of our listeners, Corey Kata, says, what's next after super tropical night? Ultra, probably super duper uh, <laughs> tropical night. I hope we don't see this, but... Did you guys know yesterday was a super moon, super blue moon or something like oh, that? I saw it. You guys actually saw this because no one cared about it because it was so hot. <laughs> that Everyone just basically like, we don't care for the moon. But look, the thing that is very concerning right now, and we've been talking about this for some quite time now, is the World Scout Jamboree, mm. which kicked off in uh, Semangam uh, two days ago amid all the heat wave alerts and uh, we had a number of heat related illnesses happening there south korean prime minister ordering measures to prevent any heat related accidents for this event tell us more about this right so regarding the operation of the world scale jamboree in semangum prime minister han Su instructed the event's organizers to stay on site until the end of the event and ensure the safety of 43,000 participants from 159 countries uh, the Prime Minister also ordered the organizers to minimize programs with a high risk of causing heat illness and quickly discuss with the Federation how to replace them with programs or breaks to avoid the heat. Yeah, and the, the concerning thing right now they're coming out is because it's so hot and humid down there uh, that the food is spoiling. Mm -hmm. And again, I mean, these are kids right now and there, there's a number of kids who are going to hospitals right now because of these uh, heat-related illnesses. Um, with high heat, obviously, uh, South Korea's electricity demand is anticipated to reach its peak next week. Uh, and the government is saying the energy demand will be able to be covered. But the nation is keeping a close eye on the situation as there are still concerns about electricity supply capacity. So, Yane, tell us more about this. Right. So, according to the Ministry of Trade, Industry and Energy, the electricity demand estimate will go up to its highest on the 7th, on the 7th and 8th uh, at 92.9 gigawatts, respectively. While it originally estimated the peak to be recorded on the 10th, the ministry has revised the outlook reflecting the latest weather forecast early this morning. Now, the government explained
means that this will be, uh, you know, it will be able to handle the supply regardless of the lowered energy potential caused by the recent shutdown and operation delay of some power plants in the country. There are still concerns, however, since the Unit 2 reactor at the Hanbin nuclear power plant suddenly stopped operating since last week and the Typhoon Kanun is approaching from the south. So the government assessed that electricity supply and demand will be stable on the 7th and 8th uh, with the electricity capacity expected to reach around 103.5 gigawatts on both days. The reserve supply will remain above 10 gigawatts and if the reserve supply fall below 10.7 gigawatts, the government will initiate demand response measures, shutdowns of air conditioners in public buildings and increasing coal power generator outputs. Now, in the meantime, the Ministry of Employment and Labor recommends stopping outdoor work when the temperature is above 35 degrees. In accordance with this recommendation, some construction sites are already working uh, from 5 a.m. to 1 p.m. during heat wave, while others offer 10-minute or 15-minute breaks uh, during the heat advisory. However, due to the nature of the construction industry where meeting deadlines is crucial, it turned out there are quite a few sites where the recommended breaks were not properly secured for the workers. Uh, Government initiating shutdowns of air conditioners in public buildings. Ladies and gentlemen, this includes us here. So uh, that that is going to be rough. And uh, the, the, the last thing that the country needs is a power outage. And trust me, back uh, long many years ago in the U.S., I, I experienced a powder out, power outage in like the middle of July. And it was the worst thing ever. So hopefully uh, this is not something that we have to go through. It's not like you could, it's not like if the power is out, I'm just going to go into my car and turn on the air conditioner there because the gas prices are astronomical mm -hmm. too right now. So that doesn't even work. Anyways, guys, thank you as always for your reports. Stay safe and stay cool. And we'll see you guys again next time. See thank you again. You. you can listen to Korea Now with me, SJ Lee, by downloading the Arirang Radio application or tune in online by visiting www.arirangradio.com. So make sure you tune in Mondays through Fridays, 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. Korea time.